I really appreciate you having me here. And one thing I do want to say, I want everybody's agreement that if you have a question, something that didn't quite make sense or, or a comment, just immediately stop me. I hate it when people say, wait till the end and ask your question. Okay? So, so you all realize that organic living or organic gardening is the way that we need to go. So we're going to talk about minerals. Would you pass out the mineral flyer, please? It's the, it's the flyer to your, right here, yeah, right in front of you. And I'm in charge here? You? You're in charge. Mm -hmm. All right, so. Send some this way and we'll send some this way. So probably most of you took chemistry at one point in your life and you, you know the periodic table. There's a lot of minerals on there. Well, people don't realize how important minerals are to health. And so the definition of a mineral is an element that's essential for life. Essential. And that's for all life. That's plants, that's animals, that's people, that's everything that's alive on the planet. And they have to be in the correct proportions and um, you don't want to make you don't want to take and use man-made chemicals because they're they're man-made. They're not in the correct proportions and they're not even natural. So I also want you to turn the paper, your mineral flyer over and read what it says on the back, the top. Okay. In 1936, the government tested soil in the U.S., and they released the results in Senate document number 264. It reads, most of us are suffering from certain diet deficiencies, which cannot be remedied until depleted soils from which our food comes are brought into proper mineral balance. The alarming fact is that food now being raised on millions of acres of land that no longer contain enough minerals is starving us, no matter how much of them we eat. Lacking vitamins, the system can make use of minerals, but lacking minerals, vitamins are useless. And that was in 1936. And you know it hasn't gotten better. And, and what's real interesting is every element of our or every function of our body depends on minerals. So if we were seriously lacking minerals in 1936, it hasn't gotten better, right? And that's one reason there's so many problems with health in, in the United States. Now, what happened after World War II? The government had warehouses and warehouses and warehouses of bomb-making equipment left over from the war, and they needed to get rid of it. Well, what are they going to do with all these minerals? And what, what are bombs made out of? What three minerals? Nitrogen, sulfur. No, nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus. Mm -hmm. And so what happened is um, there were some soldiers walking through the compound one day, and there were some minerals in barrels that were leaking in the, onto the ground. They weren't in the warehouse. And they noticed the weeds were growing really, really big. So they went, well, look at this. We can sell this to the farmers and improve their crops, and we'll get rid of our supplies. Well, how many minerals do you think are needed for health? Over 70. Yeah, I, I hear many times 90, 91, 92, but it's, it's high. So imagine that you have a plant growing, and it needs 90 minerals. Let's just say 90, and you give it three. How healthy is it going to be? <laughs> Not very. So the nitrogen makes the leaves get big and lush and green. It looks good, right? And the potassium and the phosphorus, they help the roots grow big and they help the flowers grow. But if you've only got three minerals and you need 90, you're going to have weak and unhealthy plants. So the first thing Mother Nature does is says, send in the bugs. We've got to get rid of these unhealthy plants. So the bugs attack. Well, so then the government found out if they took the nerve gas and diluted it way down and sprayed it on the plants, it killed the bugs. What a... No. So now you have weak and unhealthy plants covered with poison. 
So then Mother Nature is like, you've got to get rid of these unhealthy plants. doesn't want us eating them, right? So either disease goes in or the, or the weeds take over, you know, smother out the plants. Well, we keep coming up with chemicals to handle all those. So what's the solution? Put the minerals back into the soil, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so what's interesting is they've promoted this NPK fertilizer for all these years. Every time you go to any store, you'll see 10, 10, 10, 10, 20, 10. You know, whatever the numbers are, that's just nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus. So you're not really eating healthy. And now I want you to pass out a paper called uh, The Dirty Dozen. Is that the title on it? Yep, it's The Dirty Dozen. Oh yeah. So as you're passing that out, I'm just going to talk a little bit more about... Um, so what it said on that paper is without minerals, vitamins are worthless. Mm -hmm. So we're all probably taking our daily vitamins. Well, if you don't have the minerals, you're just going to flush them out. It's not, they're not going to work. They're dependent upon having the minerals in the body. So if you start taking supplements, then you run into chances of overdoing with one mineral and shorting yourself on other minerals. So if you uh, don't have enough zinc, no, let's say you're taking zinc because you know it helps boost your immune system. Take too much zinc and it's going to uh, reduce the amount of copper that the body can absorb, which can lead to anemia and weakening of the bones. And then without iron, you feel tired, disoriented, and depressed, so you take iron supplements. The doctor oftentimes says take iron supplements, but then you can get constipated and you can get off balance with that. So. One of the things that I do, well, I'm going to go over this list first. Um, I didn't get a copy, so I can't look at it. For, I sent them all around. So okay, well, I only printed up 15. So I'll give this back to you. So there, there's a, a thing on the website you can look up, Dirty Dozen. And every year they test the food and they release it. So every year it's a little bit different. And I make a point of going over this with everybody because these are things people eat. So who eats celery? Yeah, I love celery. Do you buy it organic or from the grocery store? Organic. Good. On occasion, organic. Yeah. Well, I remember. Yeah, I remember one day I went to a, a meeting. It was a Create Clearwater meeting, and that's a gardening club in Clearwater. And uh, somebody had brought a fruit, tr a vegetable tray, and I took a bite of the celery. And I literally spit it out. I could tell it was chemicals, full of chemicals. Celery is the number one on the dirty dozen. There's 64 chemicals in celery if you don't buy it organic. Mm. And peaches, 62. Strawberries, 59. Apples, 42. Blueberries, 52. Nectarines, 33. I could go on, but you guys have your a copy of it, and that's on our website as well. So the idea with the safer alternatives is they, it looks like they have a really thick skin or kind of a hard shell or something. Is that why they're safer, like kiwi, watermelon? They're not covered with all those chemicals. Well, or the, they're, they're, they're thicker. Is it? Is it yeah, thicker? Part of it is they, they're thicker. Um, part of it is that um, some things just don't do well, you know, and, and they just they're not putting the minerals in the soil is what it comes down to. Right. And there's some things like mushrooms you really don't have to worry about because it has to have a pure natural base to grow in or they won't grow. Mm -hmm. So one of the few things that you can buy that's not organic that you don't have to worry about is mushrooms. And with pesticides, certain things like broccoli, they don't attack broccoli and certain other vegetables as much. Well, as much. As much. Relative. As much. So if you can buy organic, buy organic. Right, but right. Are, yeah. yeah, you can You can also go on the Dirty Dozen and they'll tell you what's the ten, the 12 least toxic things to buy. And those those are okay. I mean, they're, they're not as good as organic. Mm -hmm. But um, when Jane, people see this, yes. Why is it that the mushrooms won't grow unless the substance in which they're growing is pure? Because that's the way mushrooms are. If you put chemicals on them, they will not grow. 
It's, it's self-strata. It's, it's the accumulation smart. of all the, <laughs> the hummus of all the earth, it's and they have all these itself. micro yeah. things. Huh. They got to be the right temperature, the right everything for the mushrooms, to the fruity body yeah. to come out. You collect I them. Collect you mushrooms. marry and collect them each summer, and then you Up dry in the Catskills. <laughs> yeah, I, I still got them here now. Bolides and ten in the woods that we got in last How year. How many different varieties? Do you <clears throat> uh, at least 20, 20 different varieties. Wow. At least twenty. Well, yeah. In biology, we were learning that mushrooms are just one cell organisms that mm -hmm. interconnect. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the mushrooms are only one cell thick, whereas most vegetables have multiple cell layers. Oh, wow. So any chemical would get in right away and, and change the chemical makeup of a, a mushroom cell. So wow. I would assume that that would probably be one reason. Yeah, and if you think about it, mushrooms are actually growing on decaying matter. They're helping create more soil, and they're just not going to grow well mm -hmm. in chemicals because yeah. that's their nature to grow on, like, rotting trees and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I was reading um, the guy Paul Stamens. Is that the mm -hmm. mushroom guy? He's good, yeah. He's used, actually using them to reclaim... Um, oil spill sites and he's mm -hmm. growing them on right. oil and they're growing well, so I, I don't I mean I don't know yeah it's I mean, <laughs> there are certain ones that he's like oyster mushrooms and stuff that can grow on the um, chemical ones they've, they've even found certain ponds where they grow on certain mushrooms and it'll it'll neutralize the pollutants in the water and different things mm -hmm. and then the mushrooms won't have any of the bad chemicals wow. so they're really it's the they're so mysterious and wonderful. Uh, it's just, yeah, it's it's a, it's it's a, they're unbelievable. Well, algae also helps decontaminate water, and there's various microorganisms. They didn't have to put any of those poisons in the Gulf. There are right. so oh, many no. solutions that could have been done. And Eric, I want to talk with you afterwards to introduce you to my friend that you can inter that you can interview sure. about that. But yeah, there there are solutions to many things. How could I interrupt? Yes. That light is blinding my eye. Is there any way to turn the light oh, off? Oh, sure. And sure. still record? I don't know. <laughs> no, probably not. I will turn off. Thanks so much. Sorry. Just so you know, I'm recording this and I'll put it on YouTube. That's perfect. Oh, good. Okay. Thank you so much. And I'll have all of our conversations too. Now we're in trouble. Okay. Thank you. Too. Oh, okay. Thank you. So anyway, Mother Nature designed us to get our nutrients from the food, not to have to take vitamins every day and minerals and all these drugs that the doctors are trying to put us on. And so what we have to do is restore the soil so that the food we eat is nutrient dense. So we are malnourished, all of us, because we're not getting the nutrients in the food. And so um, there's a, you know, the overweight population is really huge, but that's because they're all starving and the bodies are going, give me food, and they're not giving it food. So the solution is to put minerals back into the soil. So you have this fly right here. Now I want you to open it up and look at the minerals in it. Now this, this is actually the minerals that we sell put into the soil. And this is mined from an ancient seabed out in Nevada. And um, you guys can probably see it. Can, do you want to pass I'll pass it around. I'll show the camera. Um, this is uh, a clay, and it has 91 minerals in it, and it is, it's not man-made, it's God-made. So when you put this into the soil, well, first of all, you do have to, when you're, when you're building the soil, you have to add organic matter. I don't know about you guys' yard, but my yard's full of beach sand. We get about this much of like a brownish grayish clay or sand, and then underneath is pure white beach sand. So we pull that all out, and we dig holes depending on what we're planting, and we get rid of all that, and we add nice organic matter, composted manure. Um, we compost a lot, and uh, I use a lot of this. And the thing is, there's 91 minerals in it, and when you put that into it, 
it's amazing how happy the plants are. They mm -hmm. grow, they're lush, they're beautiful. You guys have been to my gardens. Yeah. I know that I, we have an orange tree in our yard. And two years ago, we had one orange. Last mm -hmm. year, we had like three. And this year, she, I got some of that and put it all around it. Mm -hmm. We've got over 100 now. Oh my goodness. Year. It is so delicious. And they are sweet. Yeah, they're really nice. How much would a thing, a container of this cost? Oh, that's $10. This one? Yeah. I have a question. It goes a long way, though. The, the list of minerals here is what's in, in this. Yep. And the source is from where? Nevada. It's an ancient and seabed. Like so green sand? How, how does this compare to green sand, seaweed, and uh, worm That's castings? what it is. Well, worm castings are wonderful. We sell worm castings as well. That's basically worms have eaten whatever was given to them. So if okay. you give them, okay. let's say that, that you are buying all organics, depending on what kind of minerals the people who grew that food put into their soil, depends on what was actually in the compost for the worms to eat, so that would determine how much comes out after the worm has used whatever it needed. So there's a lot of people who grow organically, but they don't have access to a product like this with all the minerals. And so the food they eat still has some bugs attacking it, or they're not as healthy, and they do the integrated pest management. Well, that's still organic, that's still better than the stuff you buy in the grocery store, but if they're not putting 90 minerals into their soil, then the, the food that's produced doesn't have it all. So I, I remember a few years back, I looked at a study that was done on organic foods, and they said, you know, the, the amount of minerals in grocery stores was like way down here. What was in ideal food was way up here, and what was in organics was here. So this is much better than this, but it's not this. Is so, it less attractive to the bugs? Is that with when all you those have minerals? all the minerals, you don't get bugs. You don't get diseases. You don't have to worry about the weeds. Like when people come to my house and they see my gardens, they go, "Wow, you don't have any bugs." I go, "No." And, and there's no weeds, and I don't, I don't weed that off, and I prepare the soil properly, and I don't get inundated with weeds so or diseases. One tablespoon of this per gallon. Mm -hmm. Now, and I also tell people to be very generous with it. So per gallon, that would be fine, and you replenish it every few months. But when I plant a tree, that one container plants four trees for me because I use it heavily, because I want the nutrients to be in my food. I have, a, I have a peach tree that we put in the ground between two and a half, three years ago. And a year and a half ago, we had 50 peaches on the tree. Hmm. This, this past year, and that tree was this big when I brought it home in my car. This past year, the whole tree, and it's huge, it's got to be, is it 12 foot tall, it's five, six foot yeah, wide? It was covered with flowers. And so there were well over a hundred peaches on it, but I kept pulling them off because on one branch this big, there were like seven peaches right here. So I was pulling them off and I threw away over 400 peaches. So we is harvested, it? yes, I eat it every day. You can eat it. Yes. And so we harvested over 600 peaches this year. They smelt phenomenal and they tasted delicious. So, yeah, yeah. You and live close to the beach? Pardon? Did you say you live close to the beach? Mm, no. No. Oh, wow. Five, six minutes from the beach driving. But I have beach sand. My, my whole yard is beach sand. But, but now, if you come to my yard, and I dig a hole for you, you will see black. What's my soil look like? Black. And black how many worms do you see? A lot of them. Lots and lots of worms. And I've only lived in this house for three and a half years. We've only really been gardening for two years. And you didn't bring any, buy any worms? Mm -hmm. They came? Right, yeah. right. Yeah. So even though it's, it's all sandy all around. The worms were well, we have We have these fire ants. And uh, I think the fire ants, they eat, eat, eat the worms. For, 
Oh, yeah. 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 We don't have any fire ants. Yeah, it's 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 much less. There's only one. Or two, I mean, when we probably was fire ants everywhere. We didn't really dig out all the sand, but we amended it with a tremendous amount of organic material. Uh, it's funny. It's because I leaves, seaweed, leaves, seaweed from the from uh, the black crushed egg shells. But not all this is organic, like you said. Right. You know, right. Certain things are organic. The, and it, it also depends what the horses are, are being fed. Right, right. So all this thing does matter, and I realize that's why I try to get uh, various. Uh, I want to even go by the uh, the bird sanctuary, but they wouldn't give me feathers. You know, certain things that, you know, a lot of companies just won't give you certain things. You know. Right, it's right. It's very up to the company. Well, one of the things about these minerals, um, horse trainers buy these by the ton because they give them to the horses and it helps them heal really fast if they've got energies and it makes them really strong and, and healthy. Bird growers use this. And they did a study several years back with these minerals here in Florida, some orange girls. I don't know if you're aware that the, the, the laws in this state for orchards are they have to have all these standards of spraying. They have to spray the poisons all the time because there's so many diseases. Well, what, what I, why is because when people started coming to Florida, there were wild oranges growing and they were doing well. So they started bringing in oranges from all these other places and they didn't do well here. They got all kinds of diseases and bugs and, and they weren't healthy. Well, they didn't amend the soil to what the, the oranges originally were used to growing in, so they couldn't grow here. And so now there's all these laws. I mean, Florida, I used to not even buy anything from Florida because they used to use so many chemicals here. You know, if I, if I was buying oranges, I would always only buy them from California. So there's still those same laws on the books where you cannot have a nursery a big commercial nursery if you're not constantly on a spray schedule. That's because they're not enriching the soil. And so they did a study, um, I'm not sure how many years ago, but they brought a bunch of these minerals down and put them around the trees. And they, all of a sudden, all the diseases went away and the plants, the trees were healthy. And I'll give you a story from my house. My husband, five, six years ago, uh, went to like Home Depot or Lowe's and bought a grafted grapefruit tree. So it's got lemon, lime, orange, tangerine, and grapefruit. Mm -hmm. And so we got married three years ago, and uh, I looked at this pathetic looking tree in the yard. I go, this has got to go. It was leaning and it was full of disease and curled leaves because it was full of bugs and it just looked awful. I said, we just need to get rid of this and you know, start over. And he said, oh, but this is the first tree I've ever bought. He's a city boy from Toronto. He'd never planted anything before, so now he knows how to plant. But this thing, he just oh, you know, dug a hole, threw it in, and the other one died. But this one was struggling. He said, please save it for me. I said, all right. So we literally, I got a neighbor guy, and we dug it up not totally out of the ground, but we dug all around it and straightened it up, put organic matter in there and lots of minerals and, you know, did lots of good stuff for it. And uh, tell them what it looks like now. It look fabulous. I think I am so amazed. I feel so good when there is a five different kind of fruits with one tree yeah. and then, like, what you know, is what amazing. is that, you know? It's loaded so with Actually, fruit. I really wow. want to do myself same way in my garden. Yeah, it's, it's gorgeous. It's yeah. not very big. It would fit in this. It's not even as tall as it's this room is. Yeah, it is but, nice. but the top is full of grapefruit. The back is full of oranges, That's both amazing. sides. Yeah. Very healthy. Yeah, very it's, very it, healthy plant. It's I, still not perfect. You can I still find so. a few leaves that are not 100%. How tall was the tree when you started um, compared to this? Two of these, three of these? Um, Four. One and a half. Of these? This tripod. Yeah, the camera and the and tripod. The, 
than the, the next year it was how big? Well, it's not so much um, healthy, it's tall, mm -hmm. but it's filling out and it's full. getting really full and healthy and it's full of delicious fruit now. Yeah, and minerals are what makes the food taste good, that makes the, the fruit be sweet and delicious. Who originally assimilated all those thoughts of different fruit trees to put it into one? It's just, just a graft. It's just a graft. You can graft anything. Oh, yeah. it was grafted. So yeah. is there a company that, I mean, that's really fascinating. Yeah. I want to do it with my son. Mm -hmm. that's that's exactly. well, How old is he? He's 13 years old. Yeah, good. You know that? I really want to do it. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Well, it is a well here, here's something you guys yeah. know. These two guys and, and I, we're, we're starting to do this big project that, <laughs> that you will love too, but you guys are all going to love it. We're actually looking for some property. If anybody knows any property, like two to three acres, I want three acres in, in an area that's like a main road so we can get to it. And he's going to have a restaurant, and we're going to have a garden center, we're going to have community gardens, we're going to have a community supported agriculture. And I teach workshops on every aspect of gardening. He's going to be teaching cooking. We're going to have gluten-free food, dairy-free food. We're going to have so much wonderful stuff. And um, so if you guys keep your ears and eyes out for some property for us. Um, but anyway, we'll have her son start doing some grafting, and uh, then we can have some nice grafted orange trees. And, and I've also been told that and I always thought it all had to be like four apples on one, but I was told that you can actually do pears, plums, peaches, and nectarines all on one too. So, so we'll we'll start doing some fun stuff with that too. All right. Now the next thing I want to tell you about this is like the most important thing there is once you have your organic matter. But if you're going to try to plant sand, you're never going to be successful. You've got to have lots of organic. Then you add the minerals. Now the next thing you need to add are microorganisms. You know how we've got the good bacteria in our gut and that's our, our immune system? Mm -hmm. Well, do you know we're supposed to get the microorganisms from the soil and from the food we eat? Did you know that? Mm -hmm. Has anybody here ever picked a grape fresh off the vine and eaten it? Okay, do you remember that little silvery sheen on the grape? Mm -hmm. That's the microorganisms. So when you eat fresh food, you're eating the microorganisms. We're not supposed to have to take acidophilus and bifidus and all those. Mm -hmm. Is that sheen only on fruit or is that on also? You can see it on the leaves of. You can see it on the leaves of the broccoli and stuff. Yeah, I saw someone on mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And I thought, what well, is peculiar? It's like yeah. a silvery shine. Yes, right. I was chopping right the. the uh, Raw yeah, food. absolutely. Those are the microorganisms. Yeah, so when you weird. eat that raw, you're, you're getting microorganisms. Wow. So this has all the families of all the microorganisms that are supposed to be in the soil. Now these are alive. So if you remember, I said a, a mineral is an element that's essential for life. You cannot add this to soil that doesn't have minerals because they're, you'll get a limited amount of them alive, but you're not going to keep all of them alive. So you put the two of them together, and I call this uh, number one, and this is number two. There, you have to have both of them, and then you just have the most lush, because that's the immune system for the plants. Uh, what is the ratio for the uh, microorganisms? So much per gallon. Well, what you do is you mix one tablespoon of this per gallon of water. So this will last and you that a covers. while. Just a light sprinkle over an area. Yeah, because you're not watering with this. You're just adding the microorganisms. So I usually add this a couple times a year. It won't hurt if you only have the seeds in. Oh, it won't hurt at all. No, no, it won't hurt at all. So these two things are essential for the um, life of the healthiness. Because what happens is you get the organic matter in there, you get the minerals, you get the microorganisms, you have this living community with microorganisms and insects and worms and plants. They all act in symbiosis with each other and they're extremely healthy. And then when you start eating them, your body starts getting so healthy. And it's funny because, like I said, my husband's from Toronto, he's a city boy. I'm a country girl. I've li I, I grew up organic, you know, we, we did all this stuff. So. We were getting our gardens going, and one night we were eating a salad, you know, fresh out of the garden, and we're eating, and 
we both just start smiling and we looked at each other and he says, my body is really happy with this food. I go, yeah, mine is too. Your body can feel the difference when you have all the nutrients from in the food. It's amazing how good it is. All right, so now, how many of you do not know what a genetically modified organism is? Okay, you have another sheet to pass out. Uh, Which one? The, the one to get rid of, ex to exterminate GMOs. Mm -hmm. So, a genetically modified organism is something that is created in the laboratory. The scientists take a cell of, let's say, a tomato, and they will inject fish DNA, they will inject Roundup into it, they will, they, they're just playing with it, they're just putting different things, and they usually add several, and they just inject it, so nobody really knows how it's, how it's joining with the other, D, with its normal DNA, and so then they grow this, and they sell it as food. Now, this is not recognized as food by the body. So when you eat this, you're going to get indigestion, you're going to have allergies, some, some people it affects their asthma so they can't breathe. Um, there's a lot of problems created with it. And if you continuously eat genetically modified organisms, it's going to start affecting your own DNA. So there's going to be a lot of cancer. There's going to be a lot of problems, a lot of diseases. And they're noticing this. And uh, they're finding cows that are being given a lot of genetically modified foods, foods, organisms. Um, their calves are dying. They come out deformed. Uh, it's very bad. Now, here's something I do, uh, it's not normally what I tell you about, but. How many of you eat any dairy from the grocery store? Okay. So they are injecting cows with a genetically modified form of bovine growth hormone because they want more milk. So they're doing this constantly, and so there's lots of milk coming out. Well, what happens is it's very irritating to get that much milk out of a cow. So they they're getting inflammations, and there's a lot of pus coming out with it. So they're giving them lots of injections of antibiotics to stop the inflammation. So not only are you getting pussy milk, but you're getting all the antibiotics in it. And so, pardon? You just stop. Right, so that's why they pasteurize it, they homogenize it, they're trying to kill the bacteria and the pus that's in there. But what's scary is that's going into you. So if you're buying any dairy that's not organic. You can even add to that. Cows don't eat corn. Did you know that? Yeah, cows right. are not made yeah. to eat Since corn. Since we, our government subsidizes it, that's right. they're feeding it to the cows because it's, it's cheaper than anything it's else you can buy. Right. And it's creating germs I, and disease. I thought that they stopped that. that. I thought that they found that that was wrong, and they, they ended up stopping that. They stopped the feeding cows to cows. The yeah. bovine and hormone. They, the but they were doing that. They were, I'm they talking were, about the bovine hormone. Did they stop that? No. no. I don't think so. No. I don't they, they, they were trying in New York State to have it listed on the on the on the carton, and they knocked it down. Right. It was so strong that they wouldn't even, you know, like we we only drink we occasionally have pizza, well, but. You know, for about three, I guess three or four years, we didn't have anything, and it does make a difference. I felt healthier. Just not any kind of dairy product whatsoever. And I just had creamer today, too. Yeah. Oh, it's just, yes, no wonder you're glowing. <laughs> I used to live cow and buffalo, and it is organic. We never feed any chemical anyway. You know, there's right. a whole, very organic. And then it is good, that cow, that milk. And now, you know, it's your habit. I so you like to drink a little bit. Not me, but I want to give my children. And I don't get organic. Sometimes I get organic. But yeah. It's expensive. Yeah. But, 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 but it's still not good. I think the gold products are better. Gold milk and gold cheese is, I think, a better choice, too, if you have 
Yeah. If you're able to afford it. I know there's a uh, dancing goat in the middle of the Pinellas County. They have uh, milk that's not for human consumption. Right. Uh -huh. Milk that is not for yeah. human consumption. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. It's called right. dancing goat. Yeah. 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 And also, if you go to Peter Gillen's downtown Clearwater, they have raw, organic um, butter, cream, milk, um, maybe cottage cheese, a few other things. Mm -hmm. So if I do anything, that's what I do. It's Downtown Clearwater. It's uh, Fort Harrison in Cleveland. It's uh, there's a right here. There's a Starbucks. It's it's across the street. Yeah, and they also have a gluten-free restaurant. They just opened up like two, three weeks ago, and they they have a lot of good stuff. But um, yeah, yeah. And the thing is, Ben and Jerry's and a few other people say, oh. All our ice cream is all natural. They still use the, the, the milk from those cows. Well, a lot of them do have a, we have a statement out there saying we don't use milk from bovine, with from farmers that use bovine growth. Okay, hormone. if they say that, then that's okay. They, they, made them, they made them take but, off all natural. Uh, did they make them take yeah, off? Yeah, they made them yeah. take yeah. it off. Yeah. But, but they say that statement, but then I've also talked to some farmers who, um, well, Farmers who talk to other farmers who sell to like the big milk, they call them co-ops, right. and um, that all they had to do was sign an affidavit saying they don't use the bovine growth yeah. form, and that was like that was it. So I don't. Right. I don't and if they're not ethical and they're lying, then right. The yeah. problem I think with organic milk is it's ultra pasteurized, right. which is yeah. almost as bad as right. That's why I won't buy that. That's yeah. why I go to Peter Gillum's and I buy the raw. There's that's I mean, all. I will there's drink. a co-op that gets raw milk. Yeah. Yeah. Every two weeks. Right. Is that Marcy's? Uh, well, Marcy does. She hers is from like Sarasota, I think. But there's also um, right in Seminole, there's a drop from a pharmacy in Tallahassee called Joab. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, they yeah. Have yeah. Cream That's who butter. Peter Gillums gets it from. Oh yeah. Okay. Same same farm. So now is this open to public? What you're talking about? Um. Well, or is it's, it more of a small? Kind it's of a co small co-op, but um, I can let you know about it. Okay. Area. Yeah, it's just like a, you know, mom runs it. What, and where, where is she? Well, they just drop off. You have to meet the truck. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's at a church. And, and where is this church? Um, so why don't you get by, from, yeah. Yeah, from yeah, if you or start, start, start Mary, 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 Give to Mary, 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 that I think. Mary's, Mary's our source. Yeah. Yeah. There, there's, a, there's many co-ops around. Yeah. And we get them on Facebook, thanks no, we to Facebook uh, Cola. Yeah. So oh, this good. whole group can start communicating with each other, I guess. Oh, that's so great. That's yeah. So we yeah. need to Under get the that name information, too. Right. You, you'll put that out, too? What's that? The Facebook location yeah. for the group? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Oh, great. Oh, yeah, there's a whole long description about when we started, names of speakers we've had so far. Or you can start with them. We, we got oh, good. Well, maybe we can put on links. I wouldn't have the idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I have no idea how to do that either. Yeah. But yeah. 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 When, when you watch down this yeah. road, like, I, I, I uh, just, which I didn't say, I had, I'm also a chef background, 22 years with Marriott and so that so. And I got so unhealthy eating foods, I, I, I lost weight, about 100 pounds, and I gained it back. And, um, once you start really eating right, you really just start feeling so much better. Right. And uh, I, bought, I bought a book, uh, Seeds of Destruction. Mm, right, right. And uh, unbelievable. There was a scientist in, in Britain that was hired to prove, and he believed in the benefits of genetically modified food. And after he he, he gave them the results, uh, and it can't want to be a negative, but it was tomatoes with the fish gene and stuff, and they wouldn't publish it. He goes, I'm not going to put my name to it. So it was this whole thing, and then he's suing them, and suing them. I don't know what was the end of the whole thing, but uh, absolutely right. We, every dollar you spend and how you spend it, you're, you're, you're making a choice. You're yeah. voting for, for either destroying the world or possibly saving. Mm -hmm. Right, right. So I want to go over with this um, genetically modified list. So you guys are probably all aware of this, but I just want to go over it. That there's no labeling required for genetically modified. Now, there's a little bit of it done, and I'm going to tell you how to determine how the food is grown. Okay, if you buy a vegetable or a fruit, there's a little label on it and it's got 
numbers on it, like four, five, six, seven. If it's four digits, it's conventionally grown. So it's got all the poisons on it. If it's a five digit number, beginning with a nine, it's organic. That's good. If it's a five digit beginning with an eight, genetically modified. Whoa. Oh. Oh. But they don't have to. So one day, my husband went to Costco, because they actually have quite a few organics. Uh, they have organic butter, and they have wild caught Atlantic salmon and stuff like that. And one day he went and he bought groceries. I wasn't with him. And he came home, so I was unloading the groceries, and I looked at the grapes. He bought a big thing of grapes. And I looked at it, and it began with an eight. And, I go, and he was eating them. I said, stop eating them. And he said, why? I said, it's, they're genetically modified. And he said, how do you know? I said, look. And he goes, oh my God, I didn't look. So he got sick from them that night. He got, you know. Wow. So I took it back to Costco a couple of days later. And I was very vehement with the, the guys that were giving me the money back. I said, do you realize these are genetically modified? And him and the lady goes, what's that? So I'm telling them, this is what genetically modified means, and it's really bad for you, you know, and I was giving them the whole story. I said, you guys have got to stop selling these. This is not good. And so they gave me my money back, and they said, well, you'll have to talk to the manager. So I went back, and I found a manager, and I said, do you know? And he had no idea what genetically modified was. And I'm, so I told him, and I said, the grapes you have and the lemons you have are all genetically modified. You've got to stop. He goes, I didn't know. I'm going to go find the buyer. And he went to the back. Well, I didn't talk to him again. But the next time I went in, the lady in front of me was buying a big bag of lemons, and it didn't have a label on it. So they called back, and they said, it's nine, no, it's eight, blah, 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 blah. And I went, oh, my God, those are genetic. Modified. Do you know what you're buying? Good and of course, they're looking at me, and I'm going, "This is, you know." And then she goes, "Well," uh, 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 and she got him, and she left. <laughs> but so then I went, and I found three more managers, and I was telling them. And one of them goes up north, and he goes hunting, and they grow their own food. He didn't have any clue. None of the three managers knew. So I'm telling Rod, they're going, oh my God, and he goes, you know, well, I says, you have to talk to your bosses, and he goes, you know, it's going to be better if you guys write to Costco, you know, email them, Costco.com. So if you will all write to Costco a letter, you know, you guys are selling genetically modified organisms. That's not good. We don't want them. Wouldn't that be true of all the main chains and everything? Yes, yeah. yes. We need Public to ask questions. We, right. need, right. we, need, we right. need to question right. them. One section. Yeah, Normally, yeah. though, when anything is really yeah, organic, yeah, right. with it. Right. I mean, they have that label that's going to be trust yeah. 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 Right. So right. You, and stuff And if something's right. organic, it cannot be genetically modified. Exactly. You know, so. Right. But they don't have to. I know they have to have a little coat on all, every little fruit. Right. So that's what that's what you talk about. That number mm -hmm. is a little sticker that's on. Right. 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 But they don't have to label that they're genetically modified. Right. I understand that. So in Europe, I, in Europe, I think they do. They will That's not allow food from the United States to go to Europe. Europe, right. They won't. Right. They won't accept it. And that. how Americans right. just don't. I mean, I talked to many people very intelligent, and they just said, wow, science, they wouldn't feed us this if it was. And I'm like, do you, how can you come up with these things? <laughs> right. right. The diet. Right. A little, a little too, too trusting for my. The American exactly. diet is based taste. on greed. Yeah. If it oh, stays absolutely. on the shelf longer, sell it. Right, yeah. right. So I want to go over these and make sure that you guys really get this. So anything in the grocery store, unless it's labeled organic, that has corn, soy, cottonseed, or canola oil in it, is genetically modified. All of it is. Now, and then people say to me, well, it's okay to eat soy if it's not genetically modified, right? No, oh, no. soy is not people food. It's no. cattle food. No. Do you know why soy is so popular now? In China long time ago, they had an overpopulation problem. And they used to go in, they have a law, you're only allowed one child. And so what they were doing is after the woman had a child, doctors would go into, two people would go into her house, they would do a hysterectomy on her, no anesthesia, no permission, and leave, and often she died. 
Well, you can tell that probably wasn't real popular. So they had to figure out a better solution. So they did some research and they found out that if you give people a lot of soy, it, it increases the estrogen level and it sterilizes them, male and female. So they started promoting soy. Well, Chinese don't drink soy milk. They don't drink much milk. So they came up with tofu, the cheese. And so they started promoting it, promoting it, promoting it. Now, tofu is supposed to be so healthy. I used to eat it because I didn't know better. So did I. Yeah, and so um, all soy is bad. It's, it's not human food. It's cow food. So nobody should be eating soy. I don't care Fermented. if it's organic. Fermented is okay, right? Fermented is okay. The tamari and the you don't miso. Eat that right, right. No, the fermented is fine. It's actually good. It helps um, boost your immune system. Tempeh. Tempeh. Yeah. Tempeh. Yeah, because mm -hmm. miso, is, miso is what helped keep the people alive after Hiroshima and Nagasaki because they, they drank lots of miso soup and it helped them get, yeah. And cottonseed. Cottonseed, I have always told people, don't eat it because cotton is not a food, right? So there's no laws on what have to be sprayed on it. There's no rules because it's not food. And then they take the seeds and they make oil and they sell it. It's very, very toxic. Very bad. And canola oil. Does anybody know what, what seed canola oil comes from? Rapes. Exactly. And do you know the background of rapeseed? Back when Wind like... Wind seed oil. Pardon? Wind seed. Wind seed oil is made from rape, uh, rapeseed. Okay, but what's the background like hundreds and hundreds of years ago, thousands of years ago? When well, Alexander we the Great... Then. Pardon? We weren't around then. <laughs> <laughs> well, back when Alexander the Great used to go conquer nations, um, people like him, they used to carry big... You know, they had big carts filled with rapeseed because if they were conquering an area but they didn't plan to habitate it, they would dump the rapeseed all over because the rapeseed would grow deep and wide and, and it would poison the earth and then the people who were left there couldn't grow their own food and they, they would have to leave. It was kind of like the, the walnut trees, you know, it puts poison out so nothing can grow under it. So rapeseed is actually a very toxic plant. Allopathic. Yeah. Pardon? Allopathic, I think. Allopathic. Is that the word? That's Where the roots produce toxins that other plants can't live by. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And, and is so, this is what the canola comes from. Uh -huh. Right. So I'm not sure. Fifty years ago, thirty years ago, I'm not sure the exact date, but. Um, Canadian oil wanted to have its own product. And so they were looking around for, well, what can we make oil out of that would be good? And they found, oh, nobody's using this rapeseed. So let's use rapeseed oil. Um, but they thought, well, nobody's going to buy rapeseed oil. So they called, they said, we got to give it a name. They're Canadian oil. So they decided to call it Cun Oil. So then they start promoting how wonderful canola oil is. And you can even see it on TV shows. You know, the chef, I use my canola oil. It's not good for you guys. I don't care if it's organic or not. Don't use it. So what oil do you use? I use coconut oil for cooking in butter. Mm. And I use olive oil for my salads. Okay. And uh, then... It, it's scary, the, the new ones they're coming out with, and the only ones I know of right now are the zucchini, the kirtneck squash, the Hawaiian papaya, and then the sugar beets. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so you really have to pay attention to what you're eating, and it's best if you grow your own. You had a question? No? Okay. No, but I think for me, I'm, um, I want to eat healthier, but it's hard to keep up with everything. As, you know, I work and I do a lot, so um, what's for somebody that can't spend hours and hours reading and keeping up with things? I mean, just trying to think what's... I think most people do want to eat healthier and do want to do organic, but it does, it costs more, you have to go to more trouble to find it, so I don't, I don't know if there's anything locally to... Like you told me about this, what does Peter... Peter Gillum. Yeah, like I didn't know about that. How do we find out about things like that? Is, mm. is that 
I mean, that's part of what our groups or small right. groups, right. like Eric's, you know, the co-green. That's getting why we those, have to network. Getting really us educated. And pass everything around. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just, well, yeah. hopefully this YouTube Raise gets hit up a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And um, that's why one of the, pro we're, we're working on some projects to, to get property and start turning it into. Because right. a lot of people say, well, I live in a condo. So that's why I want to set up some community gardens. And, of course, we're going to drill our own wells. Uh, the the soil is going to be totally prepared so people don't have to try so like to prepare people that the have soil. these community gardens, can they sell? Like, I don't know. There's some of them doing so something we, where they can sell and, and, and the city of Seminole, city of Largo folks can... You could set something up and ask for to, donations. You'd have to have all kinds of licenses. I know. It gets yeah. complicated. It's like yeah. Gateway yeah. Farms when I go, I buy the... I, I don't eat eggs... Uh, I mean, y'all barter among yourselves, or for some you know, of that. stuff you grow that you can share with. I mean, I'm just trying to think of, of ways that, like, I I'm not somebody that's going to do the gardening. Right. But someone suggested, like, when they have a thrift store, store next to our garden, they run it on Tuesday to put up a little stand and like you know, ask for donations. Yeah. You know? That one by the church. There. We yeah. we don't really make a tremendous. We, so, some weeks we have, and then we don't we have a consistent. Supply, flow, you know, yeah. flow. Right, right. And we, a, we trade amongst and we each trade other gardeners. Right. Right. I got this now, you give me Now, you there. mentioned a co op or something that that's right. what I'm wondering. Um, like for me, gluten free and getting organic, those are the things I just I need to know those spots. Maybe there's some link somewhere to the, you know, with resource mm -hmm. list, or, you know. And they just food patch, that's up on Cleveland, that's a very good mm -hmm. store. And there's, you know, there's certain stores where I, I make it like a monthly visit, you know, for. Right. Organics, uh, okay. seeds and beans, and certain things, and I uh, try to, you know, I, I didn't realize that that, that list changes. You know, yeah. strawberries was the top of the list when I looked at it. Right, uh, right. You know, I will so. not eat strawberries from Florida. Yeah, I, do, you know, I won't eat them. Mm. That is so sad. They're, 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 I'm from Michigan, so I know I used to work at a berry farm for four years, and I've picked berries for forever, and they're so sweet and delicious. And anything that I've tasted in Florida, it's like there's no minerals in the sand. And and the thing is, they they, they turn them under every year, and then they plant them with tomatoes and, and the soil. They don't soil. Really give the soil a chance for us. Do no, they don't. It's just more chemicals like, and chemicals. Right, the chemical, really chemical, chemical, chemical. It's all about money, yeah. Now, my mom was born and raised, both my parents were born and raised in Greece, and uh, several years ago, when I took a trip there, she used to just say that after you been there and you've seen how rich the soil is. Um, now she was used to villages and that kind of thing, right. so I don't know as far right. as commercial production, that kind of thing, I don't know how they treat their soil. They may have gone to abusing it too, I don't know, but it, yeah, I remember one time being with some friends and they went and picked the little, like the greens on the hillside, and I never used to want to eat greens that mom made because I just thought that was gross, you know, growing up. Ew, stringy things, it's just the gross. But I ate those and they were so good. And then, like, and then I come back here and, you know, and it used to be that way with other fruits and things you eat there that you can't, almost just can't eat here, like, because they pick it so early or whatever. And, and it, it obviously must be the, a lot of it as well. A lot of it's grown, like uh, Roma tomatoes or strawberries, to look good. And we actually mm -hmm. cut into them, there's nothing in there. Right. Mm -hmm. So you go into Sam's Club or something, you see these strawberries this big. Mm -hmm. And they're a bit, but you t there's no taste. Yeah. Right. A little, they're, little exaggeration. They're, yeah, so little. Yeah. But they're raised to travel in a truck across the country yeah, right, without right. bruising and breaking. Yeah, right. I've been to several farms, like Gateway, Sweetwater, I've been to farms in Plant City. I've been to Mayaka. There's a lot of farms over there. Mm -hmm. And you can tell the difference between the organic and the, and the right, other one. Right. It looks like a moonscape when you go out to Mayaka or Plant City. Mm -hmm. And you go to these organic farms, and the soil is so rich compared mm -hmm. to anywhere else. And it's amazing, the difference. And it's all about the soil. It really is. Yeah. It is. Well, totally wanted, is. Yeah. So the really, eggs. it would come down to if enough people are educated and start buying, then it's going to drop the cost. I mean, yeah. you have to, right? Well, okay, wait, farms, so we, when I go there, they say, don't, you know, you're buying this for your pet or something. It's like, okay. instead of the other thing, yeah, it's for non, not non for human, human not for human consumption. Right. That's how they have to sell it to cover their, right. you know, Lost. bucks, you know, the lawsuits. <laughs> The next civil disobedience is eating healthy. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Correct. Yeah. Well, if it's regulated, yeah. 
if it's regulated, it'd be wrong. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. so one of the things as I was telling Mary is that I would love it if you guys wanted to come and see my garden so you can see what I've done in just a little over two years. And you'll get, you have your yeah, well, I don't have an agenda yet for February 7. Might that work with your schedule if we sure. plan like a field trip? Sure. All in yeah. favor? Field trip. <laughs> yeah? How close is it? 21 minutes. Okay. okay. That would be great. Yeah, you, you got my card. You, yeah. All that yeah. stuff has my address on it. So, um, Am I going to get a bus? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe Mr. Root, he knows how to we'll order do a, a train. Bus. Car train. Mr. Yeah. Root noticed. Notice his name, Mr. Root, and he came to this meeting. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's good stuff. So, so I, what I need you guys' help with is if you can help us find some property, and um, you know, just let me know what what kind of things you guys need and want because we try to help people grow their own food in their yards if they, you know, if they have a yard. And we actually help people who don't have the time or the energy or the bodies to do it. We do, we do that as well. Mm -hmm. So we are a full service um, company and we build these beautiful raised beds that if you go on my website you can see pictures of them. And we call them our no bend boxes for people who, you know, it's hard to get down and up sometimes. But um, yeah, just let us know, you know, what you guys need and want and then I'll see you at my house next month. It, are these other two papers you want them going in? Which ones are they? In 1936, the government tested the soil. If you guys want a copy oh, of that to that take that with you, but it's on the back of this. Oh, okay. But if and you want that to give to somebody. Success story? Yes, please pass that around and let me know what you got out of the today's talk. Uh, any recommendations, anything like that? So I appreciate the feedback. Oh, I, um, have you, do you use bricks? Have you? Done that, you know, the bricks testing? I have. And how do you find it? Um, the problem is, I borrowed one of the bricks, is um, a measurement of how much sugar is in the, the produce. And a neighbor of mine, a friend of mine, actually had a bricks meter. And what you do is you take the juice and you put it under this thing and you look at it and you, it tells you, you know, you compare it with the it just tells you how much sugar is in it. Um, at the time he brought it over, there was like nothing being produced because it was like September, mm -hmm. and so I didn't, I wasn't able to really determine what it was. I, I've read, um, but I haven't tried it. But I mean, I read about you can just even take the juice of the stem, you know, a leaf before the plant has even produced fruit or whatever, and check that. So I don't know. Well. It kind of monitor taken, it the whole time. But if you're trying to determine if your fruit has well, a high bricks, you, you can't really get that from the leaf. Well, the, what I was reading about was that the whole plant will repel bugs and disease if it has a high bricks. Like so, that's why the leaf was kind of useful. yeah. Oh, have you done it? Eric? Well, I, I was in chemistry, and, and we've used, it's basically spectrometry. Right. Mm -hmm. What you're trying to understand and find out is how many dissolved minerals or elements right. are in the plant. So it doesn't tell you the specific just minerals, it just says how much. So if you have a higher brick level, you know, you have healthier soil, but um, it doesn't tell you everything. It just, it's very narrow, it's very, uh, just tells you how much. Uh, I mean, mm -hmm. you go to a brick level at a, uh, these conventional farms, and they have a very low brick level. That's why they have to spray all of that water on the strawberry fields, is because they have low solubility in the in the water content, and that that's a lower uh, freezing point. If you actually have healthier plants, they don't freeze easy because it's harder to freeze them. And, yeah. Yeah. Give me a second. Could I ask our speaker to 